So welcome everyone to Facebook Marketing Essentials for Business. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Well, actually, we're going to start with a little bit of information about SCORE. I know you all have come in here through SCORE of Santa Barbara. Uh, you might be dialing in from somewhere else, which is good <laughs> as well. But I always like to uh, reiterate all of the great uh, services that SCORE offers in addition to this webinar that you're attending today. So as you can see here, there's uh, almost 10,000 volunteers volunteers in 300 chapters nationwide. Um, it used to be, the acronym stands for the Service Corps of Retired Executives, but SCORE doesn't really focus on that anymore because a lot of us are not retired executives, but 50 years ago when SCORE started, that's what the, how it was started. Um, but since then, it's grown quite, uh, quite a bit and offers a lot of great services for businesses at any stage of your business, from startup to scaling to maybe even getting to the point of selling your business. There's something for everyone. So in addition to these webinars and workshops, um, you can get free mentoring in all different types of business disciplines, um, whether it's marketing or finance, uh, business management, manufacturing, sales, pretty much everything except legal advice. And you can um, check out a local mentor if you want one that's face to face. If you're dialing in from Santa Barbara, there's plenty of mentors in the Santa Barbara chapter, but you can also go to the national website here, the, the local and the national one um, to find mentors. And they have a really great, since the pandemic, a really great resource for finding more mentors across the country. Many will work virtually. So you just type in what type of mentor you're looking for or what type of um, help you need with, and you might find hundreds of mentors around the country that might get a uh, have your specific skill sets um, that you need help with. So check out the local site. If you're not dialing in from Santa Barbara and you want your local, just go to the national site and look at find a chapter. Um, all of the websites have great resources to um, check out, free webinars, on-demand webinars, uh, downloads, you know, on marketing and business plans, all types of things. Um, and you can attend webinars anywhere in the country that you want. So they don't have not, not uh, only your local chapters uh, offerings, you can attend them anywhere in the country. So definitely take advantage of the services SCORE has to offer. And, and please tell a business friend um, about SCORE. A lot of people don't know about all the great services that SCORE offers. So um, thank you for everyone for attending this um, webinar. And I appreciate SCORE Santa Barbara hosting us today. So that is SCORE. So a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm recording, I just double checked, <laughs> it is recording. So um, af after the class, you will receive the court recording, the slides and the content calendar that I'll talk about as well. So you'll get a, a landing page with all the assets. So don't worry if you miss anything, if I go too fast and you missed some important information, don't worry about screenshotting, just focus on the content and, and listening, um, but you will get all of that to review later, okay? Um, and then also this is a webinar format, so we have both Q&A and the chat option. So um, if you can put direct questions for me in the Q&A and any uh, comments um, in the chat, this way I can easily um, look through both and know where comments are and where questions are. And I will attempt to offer them along the way, or sorry, not offer them, answer them. You have to offer them. Um, answer them along the way, or I'll wait until the end um, to answer any questions that come in that I missed. So that's that. And then a little bit about me. Some of you may not have uh, met me <laughs> in person or virtually at any of my classes, but uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, um, I have been in the, excuse me, online e-commerce space, and you see here since 98, since um, internet dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, I was up in the San Francisco Bay Area, worked for a gourmet gift basket company, and they were a traditional catalog and retailer. I started their e-com business and took them to a million dollar plus e-com business. Um, and in addition to that up in the Bay Area, I also worked in the wine industry for, this is my 18th year. Um, I think every year since then I've had have, I've have, uh, wine clients, uh, but I also work with all types of clients. I currently have restaurant clients, CBD, um, landscaping, plant business, um, medical devices, a little bit of everything, nonprofit. So um, I have worked with all types of industries. 
Um, I do teach classes for multiple SCORE uh, chapters across the country, I think at least a dozen or so SCORE chapters. Um, I'm in the Los Angeles area. My home chapter is uh, the Los Angeles, where I'm also on the marketing and workshop committee. Um, I actually used to, before I moved back home to my hometown of LA in 2020, I was up in the uh, San Luis Obispo County, up in uh, Los Oso, so a little bit of uh, South, North, and Central uh, California here. Um, so that is me, and um, I'm going to have all of you share a little bit about you and so just before I go, somebody saying there's no audio. Can everybody hear me? Um, and it says my voice has an echo. Is that still the case? I don't know. I'm not hearing an echo on my end. Is it still echoing? Everybody, okay. So may, it might be on your end. Uh, you might want to check your computers or if you, it might be echo, echoing if you're logged in on your computer and your phone. So that might be the case. Um, so everybody can hear you. Perfect. All right. So um, so now you're all going to share uh, in the chat, please, um, what your business does, what type of business you are. If you are a business to business or business to consumer or both, just type both if you are. And what is your Facebook challenge? Like, why did you show up today? <laughs> so if you want to share that. But I always like to know who is in the room, what type of business. Sometimes I use them as examples during the presentation. So you might get some direct um, uh, information about your particular industry. So please share. Put it all in one chat message so I, I can track it easily and I'll kind of be able to see what type of business and, and if you're B2B, B2C or both. Um, and what that Facebook challenge is, I'd love to know. And hopefully I can address some of the challenges as we're um, going along in the slides. So appreciate that. So the world of marketing, I always share this slide. So some of you might have already seen it if you've attended my classes here, but uh, I know this can be overwhelming. There's a lot, right? You have your traditional marketing, TV, radio, print ads, uh, billboards, public relations, promotional products. And then your ever-expanding digital world of marketing, right? You have, of course, our websites have been around for quite a while. Um, internet advertising, social media, email marketing, search engine optimization, text and Wi-Fi marketing, new things like social media influencers, um, advertising, geofencing, retargeting. It's like, so where do you go? What do you do? Right? <laughs> which one should you be doing or which ones should you be doing? So I know it can be um, overwhelming. Of course, today we're just talking about social media, Facebook in particular. Um, but I always recommend you have a plan. So just briefly, I'll talk about having a marketing plan. This strategy circle is from my marketing plan 101 class. Um, I'm not going into details on the strategy circle today. That's that class. I think I have it coming up on June 14th and somewhere another date after that, <laughs> different score chapters in Santa Barbara. So if you want to see that class, but usually I meet all of you, you know, and when you attend my webinars at step five, your channels, right? Social media and email and all of that. I, I say the fun stuff, but I always recommend you step back, make sure you also are looking at steps one through four, you know, know what your goals are for your business your marketing, who your customers are, very important because not all of the customers hang out in the same places. If you don't know who's particular who, who to focus on for your business and not fishing in the ocean, like I can help everybody, right? Um, try to narrow that down so you can, you know, fish in a pond instead of an ocean. Um, looking at all of the aspects of your business, SWOT analysis, if you ever ever done that, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, what's your unique selling proposition? You know, what makes you different from competitors who are doing the same thing? And how do you explain that to your customers? What makes you unique? And then your story, your branding, your messaging, visuals, everything that tells your story to your ideal customer. So you want to make sure you're telling the right story to the right people, right? The right time, the right place, right? Um, and then having a tactical plan in place. How are you going to execute on your social media? What tools do you need to do that? What budget do you need, right? And then always, always, always measuring and optimizing, looking under the hood of your social media, your website to see what's working, where people are coming from. So always important to look under the hood. So that in a nutshell is my marketing plan class. I do expand on all of these in that class, but very important. So today we'll, we'll talk about the fun stuff. At least I, I think it is, um, but 
think about the, the uh, other steps to get you there as well, okay? So top 10 social media marketing mistakes. And I appreciate everybody continuing to put in your information in the chat. If you, if you just came in the room, I'm just gonna stop right here a second. Put in the chat what type of business you are, if you're business to consumer or business to business or both, and what your biggest Facebook challenge is, what brought you here today. So please share that and hopefully we'll uh, use some of that information during the class. So top 10 mistakes we're not gonna make, right? Or we're gonna stop making them. So number one, no plan in place. As I just mentioned, having a plan, knowing where to focus on that, knowing what your goals are, um, not being clear about the short term and long term goals. So very important when it comes to social media, understanding that it's a very slow burn. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, I build my Facebook page and Instagram and all of that, and then people are going to come and people are going to interact, engage and buy particular from you. It does take time to build it. So knowing what your short-term and long-term goals are, very important with your marketing overall. And then not getting the basics right first. So what I mean by this is there's a lot out there, right, with social media. You know, just on Instagram, you can have posts, video, you know, reels, carousels, uh, stories, and then regular posts, um, you know, Facebook stories and Facebook lives and all that. But don't get too caught up in like, you have to do it all to start, right? If you're just kind of starting out your social media, trying to figure out getting it done on a regular basis, just get some posts out there, get the basics right first, okay? And then not measuring the right numbers. So we tend to get caught up on the vanity numbers and all it. Um, how many followers you have, right? I have 10,000 followers on Instagram, but great, congratulations. But what does that mean? What are they doing anything, right? So, um, and are they converting anywhere? Are they interacting with you? So good to look at that number, your followers and your likes and all that, but also look under the hood as I mentioned, and see what's going on and, and is anything happening with it, right? It's not going to be an immediate I shout out to the world and suddenly come people, everybody comes and buys. Um, and it's not going to be that, but just see what is going on. It, are, are people engaging and, and interacting with you in some way? And then number six, so number, sorry, number five, number five is tied into number two and number six. So if you're not clear about your short-term and long-term goals, you probably will expect too much in too short of a time. And then you probably will be disappointed and give up too early. So go back to number two and look at your long-term and short-term goals. And then number five and number six won't happen, okay? And then not having quality content in place. So images, videos, et cetera. It's all about content, all about building content and having fresh content all the time. So making, <clears throat> excuse me, making sure that you have quality images and videos of you, your products, your business, whatever it is that you're promoting. And, you know, there's plenty of stock photography to supplement out there and stock video content, but just having that plan in place to create content. Um, thinking success will come naturally to the ones with the best, best product or content, not necessarily. Um, it's a lot about consistency. You know, I'll give you an example. Um, and as, I don't know, Sharon, if you're still, is my voice coming out weird for everybody or is it just for Sharon? I don't know. Hopefully it's everybody else okay. I just want to make sure I'm not weird. Okay. Everybody. So Sharon, what you might want to do is maybe log out and come back in, you know, come back in a few minutes and you'll see that on the recording. So anything you miss, you'll, you won't really miss it. Uh, but Mike, it seems like everything, everybody else is doing good. Um, so it might be something on your end. Um, and if you're logged in in more than one device, it definitely will echo um, for you. So it sounds like it might be your sound. So anyways, um, so again, number eight, I'll give you an example. I was talking to somebody, they, we did a strategy session and she was lamenting about a friend of hers that said, I don't understand. Well, she has 10,000 followers, which she did. And she doesn't really post up anything that special, you know, um, just her in her life, you know. And so as we were talking, I went to her friend's Instagram, this was all on Instagram um, page, and I started scrolling back and kind of looking at all the content. And as I was scrolling back to the very beginning, her friend had been on Instagram for nine years at that point, from the beginning of time with Instagram. She didn't do anything to game the system. 
she posted regular basis for nine straight years. So it only took her nine years to be an overnight success, right? So don't look at it like, well, hmm, somebody's going to you know, come along and, and be an overnight success. It rarely happens. It can happen, but it's not for us mere mortals <laughs> usually. Um, it's all about just being consistent out there. Okay. And then number nine and kind of number 10 tied in together, trying to do social media yourself when you don't like social media. So if you're the boss um, and, you know, a lot of times we wear all the hats or most of the hats in the company. Um, and it's, I have heard from a lot of business owners like, oh, I hate Facebook. I hate social media or I just don't have time to do it. Um, and it doesn't get, it won't get done. Right. We tend to not want to do things we don't like doing. Um, so make sure that if you're, you're the one who's not into social media, don't assume all of your customers hate it as well. You know, so if you already have that negative mindset about it, um, it's going to be a struggle. Okay. Um, and then thinking everybody can do social media. No, your 11 year old son or child should not be doing your social media for you. <laughs> I had actually somebody asked if they could, um, you know, making sure that whoever you hire, or you do it, that they understand all of the strategy behind social media, who is hanging out where. You know, I've heard where it's some now I hired somebody and she doesn't think anybody's on Facebook. Well, she's a, a young millennial millennial who is maybe hanging out more on Instagram, but her customers followers are more on Facebook because they're older. You know, so don't don't discount like, oh, nobody goes on Facebook or I don't go on Facebook. So then it's not important. Your customers might be there. So just making sure you know somebody, have hire somebody who knows all the strategy behind it, when to post, what to post, where you where you should be hanging out um, for your particular business um, out there, and then what kind of content mix you should do. So very important to have that um, right person doing it for you. So that's some mistakes we're not going to make, right? Um, let's see. Oh, perfect. So it looks like we're we're fixing some. Uh, audio issue. So um, anybody let me know if there's, it's still happening, but I think it looks like it's good. Oh, the glories of Zoom, right? Even after a couple of years. <laughs> so uh, so let's look at some stats. Oops, sorry, my, my, mouse, my mouse is too magic there. So who's hanging out on social media by generation, right? So as of 2022, this year, this is how old our different generations are. So Gen Z or Zillennials, um, they're 10 to 25 years old right now. The Gen Y and millennials, they're starting to get a little older, right? 26 to 41, Gen X, little sandwiched in, in between generation, between the big two uh, generations, 42 to 57, baby boomers, 58 to 67, and then the silent or golden 68 plus. So as you can see here, they all kind of cross over not too far off from each other. The 18 to 29 range hits Gen Z and a little bit of Gen Y. Um, the 81% hits a little Gen Y and Gen X and then Gen X and baby boomers. So you can see not too far off. And this is social media overall, not, not just Facebook, social media overall. Um, and you can see here the older crowd, it does drop off almost by half compared to the other generations here. They're still there but not as much as the, the younger um, generations or the generations just before them. So um, if that makes sense. And then percentage of people who hang out on social media or, or, or using social media on a daily basis, you can see here, um, majority are usually on Facebook on a daily basis and followed by YouTube, which beats Instagram by a little bit. And then Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, a little bit younger crowd, but um, generally Facebook is still the number one platform out there um, for social media. And then a few more stats here. So 2.8 billion active users as of the third quarter of 2021. So not too far off. And I think I saw a stat that said there was about a 50% growth um, each year. Um, so it goes up a little bit each year. It did, I was looking at different years, 2018, 2020, 2019, it, it kind of flattened out because people were leaving. They were losing 10 million plus um, users. Um, every month. So people were exiting Facebook, but then a lot of people came back in 2020 because of the pandemic and have continued to rise from there. Again, it is the most popular 
uh, social media platform out there um, still, <laughs> okay? Uh, many users use it as on a mobile device, 98% of the users access the social platform on mobile devices. Um, 500 stories, Facebook stories have 500 daily, 500 million daily viewers. Um, interesting about the 16% of Facebook profiles are duplicates or fake. <laughs> so there could be a lot of followers, likers that you have that could be fake or duplicate accounts. Not too many though. Right. And then it is the king of social media. Facebook is a leading platform reaching almost 60% of social media users. Um, six, so six out of 10, 63% of U.S. population age 12 plus say they use Facebook. That's as of 2020. Um, I think I saw the current number. Um, I have another slide. It's about 73%, 72, 73%. Um, so 54% of social browsers use social media to research products. So they're looking for products on there, not their primary reason. 71% um, of consumers who have had a positive experience will most likely share and recommend their brand. So it's kind of like the, you know, we'll tell 10 friends and they'll tend to tell 10 friends. Now it could be tens of thousands of friends. Um, so uh, yeah, people are sharing. So here's that stat here. Look at 2005, and this is overall, all social media, not, not again, not just Facebook. 2005, only 5% of Americans were on social media in some way, shape or form. Probably MySpace, I think back then, and Facebook was just coming along. And this is 2019. So again, 2021, because 2022 is even though we're halfway through, I don't know a lot of stats yet, but it's about 73% right now um, that are on social media in some way. And so what do people want from brands or want brands to be on social media once you're on it? Pretty similar to if you're going into a store on some of these, you know, they want you to be honest and friendly and helpful. I mean, you might not want people to be as funny when you walk into a store, but people like humor more than being mean, right? <laughs> um, the other three, to be careful with um, trendy, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what they mean by trendy necessarily. It could be a good thing. Um, but the other, the bottom two, I would say political rather than politically correct or snarky. Politics, definitely very hot button. We're very polarized in this country. It doesn't matter if you're red, purple, blue, whatever. You just, you know, you want to be careful. Um, if you're, if you want to purposely offend the other side politically and that's your business, that's your business to do that. So just be careful with that. And being snarky, it doesn't always come off. You know, we have content, context and how we say things and how people read them. They're very sensitive people <laughs> these days. to be careful. There are some big brands that can pull this off. You know, uh, Bur Burger King and, and Wendy's can have their burger Twitter wars and people think it's funny uh, that they can be snarky, but most of us can't pull it off uh, where it really doesn't offend. I've, I've seen businesses um, epically fail at this uh, where they offend their customers more than they think it's funny. Okay. And what can brands do on social media to get people to make a purchase? So again, pretty similar, be responsive, be there, just like if you're walking in the storefront, you know, hello, greeting, offering promotions, people love those still. Um, educational content, so obviously educational content about your product or service um, or related. Um, exclusive content, you know, it could be interesting visuals, behind the scenes, you know, again, being funny a little bit, ha ha. <laughs> so, and Facebook is turning 18 this year. Um, anybody here, raise your hand if you've been on Facebook since 18 years ago. I, don't, I think I was there. I think I was on Twitter before Facebook. I was like 2006 or so. So it's been, it's been around. It's hard to believe. It's been 18 years. Um, could have had a child in, in that year and are go, ready to go to college. In that time, Facebook's been around. Um, so percentage of your social traffic that is organic. So this is an important one. I'm going to stop here and talk about organic reach right now because um, this will be important for some of the other slides. So as you can see here from 2009 to 2019, a couple of years back, um, you can see the organic reach and how it's dropped and what organic reach is. If you're not, I actually had somebody who thought I was talking about like organic vegetables. Um, but organic reach means organic, they come to you naturally versus paid traffic. 
Okay, so it's so many different screens. So people are just coming to you, they like your page and they're coming to visit your page or they're following something on some platform. So with Facebook, as you can see here, um, going back you know, in time, it was almost close to 100% organic reach. So everything you posted was seen by all of your friends and then pages came along and groups, right? So there's a couple of reasons for this dramatic drop in organic reach. As you can see here, it's about, this number here, it's not really about 25%. Um, overall, Facebook, okay, overall social traffic, but Facebook is about one to 3%. It's been pretty steady that way for quite a few years. The big reason for Facebook organic reach being so low, two reasons, Facebook wants your money, right? So they, their business, they want advertising dollars. So they've been dropping, you know, as they're realizing, okay, we need to pay our employees and make money. Um, they've been dropping down the organic reach and asking you to pay to play. That's one reason. The other big reason is the sheer amount of content that Facebook has these days, right? Which I guess is good and bad. So say, for example, I have a thousand friends on my profile and I like 50 pages and I'm in 25 groups. So if all of my friends and all of my pages and all of my groups posted on a daily basis, regularly throughout the day, you can imagine what my feed and your feed would look like if every single post <laughs> showed up on my feed chronologically, right? In between all the advertising, I would have a never ending flow of content I couldn't keep up with. So Facebook had to come up with some way to, to pull back the content and say, well, let's just show Patty what is relevant to her. And the only way, well, you know, I'm like, well, how do you know what's relevant, right? They can't determine what I want. I want to see everybody, <laughs> but we can't, right? So the only way Facebook can do it is with their algorithms. And if you interact in some way, if you click on something, right? They don't know if I'm just sitting here, you know, thumbing through my profile feed on my phone or scrolling on my, my laptop. And I'm, you know, sitting and see my friend Joe's dog video and I laugh at it, but I don't interact with it at all. They don't know that I like his content unless I hit like, comment, share on it. <clears throat> so I engage with it. So that is the only way. So anything that you engage with, you're going to start seeing more of. They're, that's what they consider relevant. Okay. So this is an important thing to remember when it comes to you and you posting for your business page, right? Knowing that even if you have 5,000 likes on Facebook, all 5,000 are not going to see every single post. Only the ones that highly engage with your post are going to see them on a regular basis. So the trick is to get more people to engage so that you get more reach. Okay. So keep that in mind. You're still going to get a ton more reach if you do paid uh, Facebook ads or social media ads. But for the organic, still important to do. The more you're out there, the more you're out there. Keep that in mind. I'm, I'm going to get that on a t-shirt. I say that all the time. You know, the more you're out there, the more you're out there, folks. So the, you got to get people to engage with your content on a regular basis. And if you're not putting content out there, no one can engage. It's kind of like if you had a storefront and I'm walking down the sidewalk and I'm like, oh, look at this cool shop. Go in, the door's locked. You know, you're not inviting me in to interact with your store, <laughs> you know? So same thing. You know, you've got to be out there on social media in order for people to see you, you know, makes sense. So keep this in mind. I'm going to talk about more about that organic reach and, and creating content to get more reach and engagement, um, et cetera. But I wanted to pinpoint Instagram is starting to, they, they started using an algorithm last year where they kind of, uh, it's not chronological. They're changing up based on your different habits and behaviors on Instagram, how often you're on, what kind of content you look at, who you follow, you know, so there's a couple of different algorithm things for, for Instagram did not as dramatic as, as Facebook is with their, you know, 2% average organic reach, but it's definitely changing as well. So hope that all makes sense for now. Uh, a few more statistics, less than 10% of, of Facebook users are actually in the United States. Still a huge number. This as of 2019, this is, you know, 247 million um, in the United States, in, in the total number of two and a half billion. 
Um, still a good percentage, you know, almost consider what well, we have 330 million people in the United States take out the, the children <laughs> out of that. So a lot of, a lot of users here, 73%, right? Um, so demographics, who's on Facebook? And I compare it to Instagram. A lot of people, you know, especially the youngins, they're like, well, you know, we're not on Facebook and old people are not on Instagram, but these are the number one and number two platforms, right? So as far as female male ratio, eh, pretty close, a little bit more men on, on Facebook than women, but not too far off, almost half and half on Instagram. But where the big difference is, is the age groups, right? So, um, Zillennials and millennials on here and a little bit of Gen X are those top two groups, but you could see dramatically 50 plus drops quite a bit with Instagram, right? So it goes from 51% to 23% for that, excuse me, 50 to 64 and 65 plus 8%. So if you're seeing your market, you know, for anything you do, and I haven't gone and looked back to see who's in the room, but if anybody's in here, a senior market, um, you know, they're not directly going to be on here, but to give you an example, I was talking to, I have a, um, advisory client, but she's a patient advocate for seniors, right? So her, her, her primary audience she helps directly is 65 plus or say 60 plus, uh, but it's part of her audience, right? Because the, we call them the solo agers people who live alone who are in that age group, or they have a partner, um, husband, spouse, whatever. That is a, uh, what we call a non-responsive partner, somebody who's not, maybe not as helpful to advocate for their well-being. Um, and, but you also then have the children of that, of that, uh, oh, one second, sorry about that. Never, never fails to at we have a landscaper. <laughs> And then at the same time, just clo closing my window. I thought it was closed all the way. One second. There we go. Okay, it's a little bit, little better, but he's right below the win window with that uh, weed whacker. Hopefully he'll leave soon. So, um, so again, going back to this example, her direct market is not necessarily on social media, but a part of it is reaching the children of these older parents. So it could be same thing, say on the opposite end of things where maybe your business is tutoring young children. They're not gonna be your direct audience or buyer, or you know, the seniors would be of course, but, but the parents, so are the parents on Instagram, Facebook, depending on their demographic. So it might not always be your direct demographic that's on um, Facebook. So. Uh, let me just, I just want to go back real quick and see who's in the room. So, uh, so we have a sporting goods store. So I sort of assume business to consumer mediation, uh, online communications for economic developers, more B2B. So we have a tutor, <laughs> I didn't know that we have a tutoring. So again, ye, your primary um, audience would be the parents, right? People purchasing, not necessarily trying to find this, the kids because they're not going to hire you, right? <laughs> For the most part. Um, Nextbesthome.com. I don't know exactly what that is. Lo oh, local, oh, okay, different. Local parenting magazine online. You guys should uh, connect here, <laughs> a couple of you. Uh, it's the uh, same parent. Uh, do we have multiple people from the same company? Uh, local parenting magazine, parent digital media, maybe Stacy and Jane are the same company. Um, okay, and someone said Facebook block me. No, that's not good. Freelance marketing, currently working on three consumer bounds for an ad agency. Perfect. Real estate. Um, Sam, I hello, I rem remember your name. Uh, CPA. Uh, let's see who else we have. Uh, I don't know. Some of you are not towing and roadside assistance. Demo design architecture. Okay, cool. We have a good, interesting mix. So a little B2B and B2C. So as you can see here, number one and number two, a little bit different you know, on, on uh, age groups here. And actually, if you are looking at older generation, is it is showing its rap, say rising rapidly, still not huge numbers, but it did start seeing an increase even before the pandemic. As you can see here, this is through 2019, that group, the silent generation, the, the boomers and above started to go up a little bit, 
you know, somewhat Gen X went down a little bit, but we've, we invented the internet, <laughs> right? So it did go up. Uh, pandemic saw a little bit of a rise because, hey, only way for us to communicate with each other was probably through social media. We weren't talking on the phone with our family. So a lot of seniors started to come back so they can stay in touch with their family and friends. And then, so what do social media marketing people like compared to consumers as far? Of course, Facebook and Instagram, number one, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Messenger, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Pinterest, WhatsApp. So um, still number one, number two is gonna be Facebook and Instagram. And then the top two reasons that people use Facebook, you know, of course, to keep in contact with friends and family and to be entertained, right? Getting it some news, you know, not so much just to go shopping. They do follow you, follow brands and companies, you know, but again, top reasons make sense. Staying in touch with family and friends and to be entertained. So if you can uh, be entertained or be entertaining with them, right? <laughs> you, know, you got one of those. So uh, perfect. Uh, people do discover products as you see here on Facebook. And again, 96% of users use social media platform via their mobile devices. So this is important. I am going to hopefully assume, and hopefully I'm not assuming wrong, that everybody, everyone here who has a website has a mobile responsive website in 2022. If you still have a website that is not mobile responsive, meaning when you shrink it down, it's mobile friendly, as opposed to having kind of to pinch and expand and, and scroll around to get around your website. If that is not the case in 2022, please, after the end of this class, go talk to your web developer and get that new website done. It hurts you for mobile uh, people who are on their mobile device who want to shop. Also, at, uh, Google will ding this couple of years back. They started dinging you if you weren't a, a mobile friendly site on SEO. It might not appear high up on search compared to other mobile friendly sites. So you want to make sure. I'm hoping everybody is <laughs> in this day and age. You should be. No excuse not to be. Um, so marketers obviously love using Facebook, as I mentioned, there's uh, probably more than 80 million now. I didn't find anything new as a number as how many businesses were using Facebook pages, but quite a few. Um, I'll talk more about Facebook groups. It definitely started to grow in popularity in 2021. Um, there's a reason from 2019 that this kind of started to happen, that Facebook um, started. I'll explain that in a minute or two. Um, people started using, of course, started shopping more. And this is as of last year. Trends definitely um, stayed high, especially after the year one of the pandemic in 2020, when a lot of consumers were forced to start shopping online for the first time, right? And they continued that trend, realized how easy it is to buy toilet paper online, <laughs> right? So that is not changing. The only slight changes um, happening as people, you know, across the country, across the globe, people are able to go out and shop more. Now, some, some of you might, I and mean, I think for all of us here in California, um, I know here in Los Angeles, we were pretty locked down until middle of last year. Um, not that we couldn't go shopping, but, you know, a lot of people stayed home and, and now are out there feeling more comfortable about shopping. So maybe a little less online, but the ones who came online and are like, I really love Instacart are sticking with it. You know, um, perfect. Thanks for everybody sharing. Mobile veterinary. I love that. I'd love to have a mobile veterinary near me. <laughs> I'm sure there is one here. Uh, video 82% of global internet traffic as of this year will come from streaming, uh, video streaming and downloads. Um, YouTube, most popular video sharing platform, of course. You know, um, very important to have video content. It is their consumer's favorite type of content to see from a brand on social media. They want to see more video content here. This is as of 2018, so it's definitely increased. It hasn't gone that much dramatically higher, but people still want to see that video content. And videos on Instagram can get two times more engagement on videos than any other social media platform. I know this is talking about Facebook, but videos now, and this is, you know, 2018, Instagram Reels didn't exist. They came out in August, 2020. So now Instagram Reels, you can see them on Facebook as well as Instagram, right? Videos are shared on social media 1,200% more than images and text combined. So I don't know, I think, I think uh, this probably is a good clue that 
video is important, right? I'm sorry, I went backwards there. Um, so engagement. So remember I talked about organic reach and engagement. So this is what Facebook is showing globally when the most highest engagement uh, is. So kind of like a heat map. If you look at that darkest blue, kind of right in the middle of the week, middle of the day, is the highest engagement, the time when people are most commenting, liking, sharing, or interacting with your, your content. Obviously, at maybe two or three in the morning, you know, local time, people aren't not gonna be up engaging with your content. I might be, because I'm up at that time, but most part, most people are asleep. Most mere mortals actually sleep instead of stay up all night. Um, so how often should I post per day? So this is always the controversial, I don't say controversial uh, subject, um, especially for those that don't like to post at all. But I say bare, bare minimum three times a week. Um, optimal once or twice a day. Once a day, it's good. On Instagram, the average business posts once per day. If you're doing nothing or like once a month or once when you think about posting or I have an event coming up, I'll post getting to that once a day, work your way up. You know, it does take work. I, I'm gonna show you a calendar tool to hopefully take away some of the overwhelm. You still have to have somebody creating content, creating the graphics, the captions, the, the hashtags, publishing them, interacting, engaging. It does take work. I can't take that away. Uh, I mean, I can't take it away. I could do it for you if you want, but I mean, I can't. If you're going to do it yourself, there's no magic way to take away that content. You know, you can make it a little bit easier by batching, you know, just spending a couple of hours in a day and get through as many posts as you can and pre-schedule them, you know, get ahead of the game. You know, I do that for some of my clients that, you know, they want to, they want to see content a couple of weeks or 30 days ahead. So we are constantly <laughs> in content creation mode coming up with content, it does take work. A little easier once you have some tools. I'll show you that at the end here, All right? So as post as much as you can. As I said before, the more you're out there, the more you're out there. And when it comes to organic reach, the um, not all 5,000 of your likes, likers are gonna see your post, every single post, right? So it's okay if you're posting more than once a day or three times a week or whatever, but post as much as you can consistently. You wanna keep that algorithm juiced up for people to see your content. Don't go in and catch up, you know, post in quick succession um, or disappear for weeks at a time. Again, that affects your algorithm and how you, how you appear and show up, okay? So very important to be consistent. I'll hopefully give you a tool to help you get a little bit more consistent. Um, but it's all about, it's all that numbers game. Just be out there, right? So again, just kind of re reiterating the timing. Generally, 1 to 4 p.m., remember that middle of the week, middle of the day. Um, and then also maybe the evening, maybe your audience is on a little bit later as well. You can see that. There are stats to look at on Facebook to see when, you're, when your fans, likers, <laughs> call them or online. Um, as well, but keep these time, time in mind and play around with it. We did this during the pandemic. I had a couple of winery clients at the time, beginning of the pandemic. And, you know, luckily for my wineries, a lot of people were drinking heavily during the initial pan pandemic <laughs> and they're drunk, watching Netflix, baking bread, drinking wine might not be good for your livers, but uh, a lot of people were drinking. So we're shipping a lot of wine at that time. And, you know, we started playing with timing because we realized, okay, we're doing our normal, you know, Facebook, you know, approved times of when they know people are generally online. But we realized, wait a second, now everybody's locked up. They're working from home. Kids are in Zoom school. There's no rush hour traffic, you know, 4, 4 to 6 p.m. So we started posting, you know, our usual, say, 1 to 4, we started doing 4 to 6 and maybe 6 to 8. And we see people on, on email and social media, and we saw a lift. We saw people who did purchase and interact at that time. It was just a matter of like, hey, let's try this out. There was at that time, no hard and fast rules, right? Every, it didn't matter what day of the week it was. We weren't really going anywhere. So who cares if it was Saturday, Friday, any day, whatever day, right? You know, we're kind of getting back to like, oh yeah, we do have a Monday through Friday and distinct weekends, <laughs> right? Uh, we're out doing things, you know? Um, so play with those trends. You know, you go to your Facebook insights, 
and there's under posts, um, it says when your fans are online and your likers, you know, used to be called fans, right? And it generally will probably all be pretty similar to this graph here. You know, of course people are sleeping, so it dips down and then it starts to rise again as people wake up and get online and kind of peak and drop down again. But, you know, take a look at your Facebook insights to see what, what's happening with people out there. And then here's some examples of posts. This is a, Narwhal is a company that sells glow-in-the-dark coolers. Um, they attended one of my last live classes in early 2020. And I, um, maybe it was like 2019. And I pulled, I just went to their Facebook and I pulled a, a selection of, of posts in succession pretty much just to see like what kind of mix of product of content are they making and i like that they were doing a good mix they you know here's our coolers look at they glow in the dark they also showed you their products out in the wild so to speak people using the product it doesn't have to be somewhere where it's going to glow in the dark you could take it to the beach you could take it you know go jeep climbing rock climbing whatever um since it's kind of outdoor focused product they you know for labor day they did one planet one outdoors out there responsibly a little social message there so a good mix it's not always like sell 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 i mean just the fact that you see this cooler you know out there they weren't doing a hard push you know here's a here's the uh, link to go purchase it but just showing you how cool their product is and what you can do with it some other examples big brand humana just doing educating you know, things to know about Medicare, you know, um, for their uh, target audience. Um, there, here's some more health insurance companies where not necessarily selling their health insurance, but hey, they're all about, you know, their actuary wants you to keep everybody healthy. So less, less payouts, right, uh, for sick people. So Kaiser is all about Thrive, you know, uh, staying healthy, silver sneakers, yoga classes. So educating people on a topic that's similar to what you do, um, staying healthy, maybe, you know, this is the example, I'm trying to look back at the name real quick, the tow, tow truck, the tow company, you know, maybe you do posts about, you know, how to, you know, tips on how to stay safe on the road. How do you, what happens if you get into an accident? You know, tips to things you should keep in your car in case of an accident. Um, you know, so there's, of course, the mobile, mobile vet can, do a lot of pet related tips, um, you know, out there. So it's not always just about hire me, work with me. So, you know, buy my product, educate them. Here's another uh, company that one of my very last classes they attended and live. And, and I actually got to go visit his motorcycle gear company since I ride. And a uh, good mix, you know, I just grabbed some posts. This is uh, November, 2019. Yeah, it was actually just before, just before the uh, pandemic. Um, so there's a video, the guy on the motorcycle wearing the jeans, looking comfortable on the video, the gal wearing a shirt, and then having fun with Valentine's Day. I love the, the woman's on the front. Um, and some fun with, you know, some platform and Tinder game strong. And then of course, oops, skipped right by one. And then they did some posts where they're getting some engagement. Ask a question, what bike does Santa ride? You know, and us motorcycle riders always like to show our bikes off. So people are showing off Santa riding a bike, people with red bikes. He had 52 um, comments, 27 engagements or rea reactions. Um, I don't know if he had any shares on that one. Here's the one. What song best describes this image? Comment below. 31 comments, 25 reactions, a couple shares. You know, so this is what's going to get that reach. The more people are engaged with the content. You know, having fun, it's not necessarily, let's show you my, my cool jeans or jacket. It's like, it's around the motorcycle community. And of course they're going to, you know, every time you ask people to show off their bikes, they're going to do that. Believe me, we will. Um, Lisa Leonard Designs, what I liked about her, she's um, up in San Luis Obispo, where I, I recently lived before I came back here to LA. And um, I don't know where I came about her, saw her online. Um, she advertises a lot, so it might have popped up, but I like the fact she does sell jewelry, you know, it's artisan jewelry. Thank you, Mr. Landscaper. He finally went. <laughs> it was a little loud. Um, she does a good mix of her life along with her jewelry. So, you know, we know more about her family <laughs> than 
uh, if I if I knew her, you know, she's very open about her family. She has a young son that has some um, developmental disabilities. I'm not sure what what his issues are, but she's very open about her journey with her young son. She has a naughty pug like I do, jumping on the table. So she inter intersperses her family because that's her. That's her and her story um, with her jewelry here. So, you know, look at the, look at the picture with her son gets 604 reactions, 12 comments, 21 shares, you know, on the, um, on the jewelry, you know, that she has here, her stack rings, she shows a picture and then the other people purchased them. Now her brand ambassadors are showing their stack rings. I don't have the engagement numbers on those. I cut them off, but, um, you know, the picture with her dog, you know, hashtag naughty dog. Does that have to do with jewelry? No, but it's like, hey, I can relate. I have a dog. I have a pug, two pugs. And I have some of her jewelry. She, she, she does very heavy text marketing as well. So once you get on her text list, watch out. <laughs> you can get a lot of texts. Um, I did purchase something off a of text once, so it works. Um, she does emails on the right here um, as well. So I love, you know, it's up to you. You might not want to share your family. I was, I was talking to one of my clients. Um, uh, advisory client, she does bakeries and sweets and her child was in the background playing around and she was, you know, just distracted by the child. And I, and I were, so I brought that up about, you know, bringing, bringing her family into the mix. And it's like, that's up to her. There might be ways to do it. where you are not exposing your child, like the face, you know, maybe there's a back view of them doing something, but that's part of who you are. And people relate to people. They don't necessarily relate to things but they love to hear your story. So then I'm more apt to maybe buy from her. I can get this jewelry like this anywhere, right? I mean, you can buy stack rings and find this type of stuff, you know, all over the place. But it's her and her story that, that kind of pulls me in to that. So going live, right? So we have Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Definitely have gained in popularity, especially over the last couple of years, a lot of people were forced to kind of do more Facebook and Instagram lives because they couldn't be out there really live as well. What do you do with lives? You can host a Q&A or interview, educate people on something, show them behind the scenes, run a contest, do product demos, but make sure you do it right. And what I mean by that, definitely have a little plan in place. Um, I know a lot of people, it's interesting phenomenon, get nervous when it comes to doing lives, right? We're all on, in, we're all on zoom for the most part. So we're, you know, we're fairly comfortable, you know, being in meetings and talking and networking or whatever. Um, but when it comes to lives, people kind of think it's almost like acting, you know, suddenly you go live and it's like, oh, the pressure, what do I say? Right. I had a, a winery client, um, in Paso. And it was at the start of the pandemic and it, a lot of the wineries were doing virtual tastings online. And I asked her and, and her and her husband, totally not shy people at all. He does uh, live judging competitions. She's, she's been on the radio. They are not, they're out in mosh pits at, at, at heavy metal concerts. <laughs> you know, they're, they are out there, not shy at all. But when I asked her, I said, hey, why don't you do a, a, a live, do a, a virtual tasting? And I'm on the phone with her, so I can't physically see her, but you can just see her shrink up like a flower. You know, like oh, I asked her to give me her firstborn's child. Um, it just totally different than anything else live that she does. <laughs> right. So um, so that's what I mean by plan out. If you think you're going to have any issues with going live and you don't know what to say, you don't have to script it, but have the questions ready for your interview, plan out a little agenda or outline if that's going to help you, whatever it takes. If you need a full script, do a script, you know, as well. Make sure you check, so I would say, sighting, lighting and sound. If you're outside, sometimes a slight breeze can sound like a gale force wind <laughs> on video. Um, you know, check the lighting is good as well, but do it. You can just test it with, use your recording on your video. Don't go test live um, and, and just check that uh, with a, a regular video recording for a few minutes, right? And you can definitely save the recordings for later. Promote them ahead. I get, I see all day, every day now notices, oh, so-and-so is going live on Instagram or so-and-so is going to be live on Facebook. So I definitely see it's people started to use it more and are continuing to use it. So, which is great. 
And then definitely back in favor, as it says here, 27% increase year over year in Q2 of 2020. I wonder why, what happened then? It definitely continued last year and it's continuing this year, which is almost half over now, unbelievably. And then stories. So Facebook and Instagram have stories. Instagram was first. They have 600 million and this is, I think, still 500 plus million daily stories out there. They do get better organic reach than posts. And I'll show you that why in a second. Um, people tend to trust them more as authentic, especially when it comes to all the manipulated content, fake news, and all the stuff that happened in the past years. People see it as more authentic content that happens 20, it's up there for 24 hours. You can save it on Instagram as highlights, but it's generally content that's gone in 24 hours. It does not stay on there. And you can, across the board, similar reasons you use it for, use Facebook Live, other than the fact that you're not live on them, but showing behind the scenes, um, you could, you know, mix it up with your posts, you know, same with Instagram posts, stories, reels, do a little mix of everything. Um, again, 500 million daily active users. And this is the reason why it gets more um, engagement than regular posts. It's always in the same place above the fold does not move, right? I mean, the stories change, but they're always up there for people to find, whether you're on a desktop or a laptop, or sorry, desktop or mobile, all right? Same with Instagram, always stays right at the top, doesn't move, so that's why it gets more engagement, right? So back to groups, I mentioned that it said at 2021, the group started to become more popular, but it actually started back in late 2019, uh, because of things that were happening at the time, the fake news, manipulated content, violations of privacy, a lot of people were quitting Facebook, right? I'm running away from home, <laughs> running away from Facebook. And so to counter that, Mark Zuckerberg came out in the fall of 2019 with the future is private. Now I always say the essence of privacy, right? I mean, this was his way to kind of Get, get everybody off his back about you know, all this manipulated content and violations of privacy. Um, so groups always existed before that, you know, they've been around and some of us have used them and, and they definitely gain more popularity. They even were advertising Facebook groups on television because it's kind of that way of saying, well, we're, it's gated, you know, you're in this small group of people of like-minded, um, you know, whether it's politics or maybe you're around a medical condition or hobbies or communities, right? They're more figured as trusted resources. Not always necessarily. You still get hackers in there or scammers, um, but kind of taking it off the news feed and putting it in its little, you know, uh, gated, gated area behind the velvet rope. But you have to think, you know, you might be in a group with 20,000 other people, not necessarily totally private, but it's off of your Facebook profile for everybody to interact with, right? So what does a Facebook group look like? Again, there's 1.4 billion people using over 10 million groups, little stats there. But what does that look like in compared to a page? So here's an example, Erin Condren, she, they, it's a company that's uh, life planners, as you can see here, they have their own page, of course, like all of us would, putting up their own content, and people interacting with that content. But they're a little bit different where they could have their own groups for users, but, and I don't think they use any of these or, or create any of these. These are probably user generated, customer generated. So there's multiple Aaron, if you're an Aaron Condren Life Planner user, you can just go look up Aaron Condren and pull up multiple groups. My Aaron Condren Simple, which is, you know, people who don't like to put all the stickers and tape and fancy stuff on there. Aaron Condren Newbies, Aaron Condren Marketplace, Buy and Trade. So this is luckily for them, <laughs> a place for her brand ambassadors to interact with each other. All of her buyers, hey, have you bought the latest X or have you bought the latest Y? Have you, hey, you know, there's a giant sale happening and are you going to get in on it? There are surprise boxes coming and, you know, so their customers are generating the excitement and, and around all of her products and using them. Not, not to say that Erin Condren couldn't start their own group, or could have started any of these. They just don't have to moderate and worry about any of these groups themselves. So again, they can be for 
uh, bringing, like say if you're a coach, maybe you wanna bring your customers together. Um, some of my winery clients have a special group just for their um, club members to interact with. They get exclusive content. This is where we do have the videos for the latest club shipments, making them, you know, feel behind the velvet rope, just like they would walking into the tasting room. Now they're kind of walking behind the velvet rope online as well. So it's not might not make sense for everybody's business here to have a Facebook group rather than just a page. And, and if somebody asked this yesterday's class, um, if you have both, go ahead and post content in both. It's okay, even if you have some people cross over. So people might see the group content, they might not see the page content based on the algorithm. So it's okay if you're posting, unless it's exclusive, you know, you don't stuff you're exclusively doing for your group, but if it's, you know, a general post about your business, you can put it in both if it's, if it's appropriate for the group. So not a problem on that. So hopefully that groups make sense. Um, and as far as if you don't have a group, be strategic about naming it um, because people are gonna search for certain things. So here's the Bengal Cat Club and appropriately named Bengal Cat Club. Um, so if I have a Bengal and I'm searching for like-minded Bengal Cat Club owner or cat owners, I'm gonna type in Bengal Cat, not like Bootsy's Fun Adventures. You know, we don't know Bootsy the Bengal Cat, it might not come up in that search. So make sure it makes sense. It might, you know, it could be your business name, maybe it's related to what you do. So if people are searching for it, make sure you have those search terms in there. A community for people who love Bengal cats. So that should come up in the Facebook search and potentially SEO um, out there, Google searches, you know, Bengal cat, you know, and it could pull up this Facebook group as well. So be strategic about that. And then, so how do I grow my social media? I know, I, I, wish, I, I wish I had some miracle grow and some magic rainbow sprinkles and unicorn, um, but <laughs> doesn't exist out there. It takes, it does take work does take being regular and consistent on social media, okay? Um, speak to your market, you know, know who your audience is and, and give them the content that they want. Um, have a clear brand voice and brand identity out there. You can have a similar look and feel to the post. You don't have to. I know some people get caught up on kind of the Instagram uh, page looking, you know, like it's all, you know, perfectly, you know, matchy, matchy people mostly see the individual posts. Um, so if you want the, you know, have to go and look and have this one cohesive look, but it's really more about the content, not the aesthetic of what the page is looking like. You want to have content that people are going to see each individual post as its own, making sure that you do have one voice, you know, for your business or close to one voice of what it's like, are you more conservative brand or more um, open and fun and free? And I'm not, I don't mean conservative by, with politics, but just a conservative voice. Um, you know, if you have an older audience and you have a younger person using maybe, um, what do you call it? An, um, I'm forgetting the name of the term now, not an acronyms. When you say like LOL and, and um, you know, terms that the older audience might not use, um, make sure that they're speaking to your audience and using things that that audience is going to understand, right? Um, include your social media button follow or follow buttons everywhere. Make sure they're all on your website in an easy to find spot. Make sure click on all of them. You know, everybody go to your website after this class and go click on and make sure you have all of your buttons there and they actually work. Check them. You're amazed how many broken icons and links I find when I try to find people's social media pages. And on if you're doing email marketing, which you should, you better be, it's the best uh, ROI of any marketing platform out there, make sure you have your follow buttons on your emails as well when you're sending those out. And, and if you have a storefront, make sure you have a, I don't know, QR code or your, your um, not your hashtag, your um, Icon, or I'm sorry, your handles. <laughs> you know, look at the terms today. Um, your Instagram, Facebook handles, or whatever, somewhere visible for people to find them. Encourage them to follow you. Um, make sure you're engaging, responding to your followers. If they're commenting or liking, make sure, good or bad, you're responding, and so they know somebody's alive and kicking out there um, and listening to them. And that will help. That will encourage them to be more engaging. 
which is what we want, right? Um, make it easy for others to share your content. Of course, look at your stats, see what's working. You know, you can kind of don't, don't always do like, hey, our cat video is always the best. Well, don't always just do cat videos. But if a video content's doing good, do more video content. We'll look and see what's working out there, okay? Fortunately, no magic unicorns there. So some things not to do with social media posts, this is specific for Facebook, is what's called engagement baiting, right? We want that engagement, but Facebook wants you to get organic, natural, authentic, engagement. So there's a couple different things. And, and, you know, for the most part, I see these all the time. Facebook may or may not catch you. There's one that they could where they pull, pull your content down. But if they see this on a regular basis from a brand, it could be a problem for you. So comment baiting. And this one was quite blatant <laughs> where it was like, we're telling you how to game the algorithm here. You know, not just liking alone will not affect Facebook algorithm, but commenting will. So asking people, oops, sorry about that, backwards, asking people to comment specifically, you know, can you see this? Eh, you know, only thing it's doing is baiting, right? Tag baiting, asking tag 10 friends to get this, win this jewelry, unless your 10 friends are interested in the jewelry, but you don't want to have them tagging inauthentically just to get those tags, right? Uh, like gating um, or like baiting, I should say also, this is post is just about, hey, just like us. Vote baiting, using the reactions to, to use as votes. You know, love, like, whatever. Don't want that. Share baiting, same. So really any of the engagements, like, share, comment, they don't want you to inauthentically do this. You know, share with 10 friends. You know, on your own profile and you want to have 10 friends who are interested in makeup, then share it with them, but not from your page. And then this one, especially, I said, if, if Facebook, this was back in about 2013, 2014, I was working for a credit union and we were running a contest. So this is just about that time, I remember, is when they Facebook changed their rules where you shouldn't like gate. So meaning like it, to, in order to enter to win, you must like us and then they can enter to win. I've seen contests recently where they're like, you need to like us, go to this page, follow it. Um, give me the blood type of your firstborn child to give us a recipe for cake. And then you can enter the contest, <laughs> you know, uh, jump through the hoop of fire at the end and then you're in. So you can ask them to like it after they've entered to win. So not putting any barriers, like artificial barriers, like liking it first. So be careful. I still see this happening out there. A lot of people probably don't read the rules that Facebook has around contests. There's rules about how much in some states you can't do prizes over $500. That might be why this is only 500 so they can do it across the country. But look at the, if you're doing a contest, make sure you look at their rules um, that they have currently. But this was one where it's like they could pull down your contest if they find it because you're like gating it. And just because somebody else is doing it, <laughs> getting away with it doesn't mean you should, right? If, like your parents said, just because your friends will jump off a building, would you, right? So be, be mindful of that. You don't want to put all this effort into a contest and then it get pulled down. So don't do those. Um, so the calendar. So this is the step that I mentioned, and some of you may have attended previous classes and seen this. Um, but this is the one step I find where most businesses get overwhelmed. They don't know what to post. They don't know. I don't know what to email. What do I say on a regular basis every day, day in and day out? It does take some effort, right? The, getting it on a calendar is the first step of removing the overwhelm, okay? Just getting it saying, look, I have all this stuff to post. You still have to go and create the content. And the hashtags and the, and the captions and publish it. That's still the work to be done. But I find just this step helps get that to the execution. Okay, so I'm going to show you my calendar in the next few slides. It's a simple Excel sheet. I don't use any fancy software apps or anything for my calendar. I keep it simple for my, my personal clients as well as the attendees. You can use whatever you want. If you hate my calendar, I don't, I'm not going to be offended. Um, use it or use, use something, okay? So as far as planning, I'll start with that before I show you the calendar. 
Um, you definitely want to plan ahead, right? Depending on what type of business you are, your seasonal times may be different. Some of you, I think there was, I think there was a CPA in the house, right? Somebody a CPA here might do taxes. You know, your tax season is 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 a time to be planning ahead, right? I think there's a CPA. But let's let's pretend. Oops. Um, so tax season, taxes are due in April. So kind of working backwards, maybe November, December, you start doing social media posts about getting your taxes done. So you're planning ahead for that, right? Um, if you are a business that is on Q4 selling for the holidays, you should have that planned out by the end of August, not waiting till October, end of August. When I worked for the gift basket company, we were ahead for everything. August was wrapped up. All the baskets were coming in from overseas, hundreds of thousands of bas at wicker baskets. Uh, the catalog had to be wrapped up. You know, online you have more time, but you wanted to get everything lined up so then you can execute on Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Black Friday and all of that ahead of time. So don't wait until October to do all that. Um, my new calendar comes out every year in October. So you'll all get 2022. If you want 2023 and beyond, I'll, I'll keep you on my list um, from this class. And if you want to get it, if not, just um, unsubscribe from it. But I'll make sure you all get 2023 and beyond if you want to keep getting the calendar. And you should, as soon as you get it, you should start planning for the new year. So um, don't wait until January after the holidays, because by the time we all kind of wake up from the holiday, post-holiday coma uh, between Christmas and New Year, it's like, valentine's day suddenly so i work when i do work with my own private clients i am already working with them looking at this year's calendar and seeing what we can repeat for next year what are we going to bring forward or repeat what new things we already know about are happening so planning out as much as the next year's calendar as possible before the december even hits you know, we're always going to add things in throughout the year but a lot of it's planned out and all the extra filler content I can plug in around all of the events and the promotions and the things going on that we want to talk about uh, in particular. So get ahead of the game. For Valentine's Day, you should have that plan in November. Mother's Day should be planned by Valentine's Day. So working ahead. And that, again, will also help take away the overwhelm if you are planning that ahead as well. And use it for planning and archive purposes. Of course, planning ahead but keep that calendar and using it for archive so I can go back and go, oh, what did we do in 2021 that I need to repeat in 22 and 23 and beyond, okay? And then once you're using a calendar of some sort, it's gonna help you sync your email and social media campaigns because then it's all gonna be on your calendar, okay? So I'm gonna show you each tab and page that you get with and how you use the calendar. I think I have a, I, hopefully I inserted the sample of what it looks like for B2B and B2C. It's the same exact calendar. It's just the content you use might be a little bit different. And I think we, did we have a winery in here? I thought I saw somebody mention, raise your hand if there is a winery in here or say, yes, I'm here. And I'll explain why in a minute, um, why I'm asking that question. So first thing on the tab. So it's, again, this is an Excel file. You can, it can tra or not translate, what do you call it? Um, convert to a Google sheet. Um, as well, but it starts out as, a, as an Excel file. And um, one tab you get is hashtag days. This is all about those content, creating content so that you can get more reach, right? And engagement and reach. So hashtag days are great content ideas. Some of them might uh, work directly for your business. You know, maybe you're a wellness or fitness business. You can have fitness Friday, wellness Wednesday, motivation Monday, uh, taco Tuesday, if you're a food and you have tacos. Uh, Thirsty Thursday for the wine um, industry. I use Wine Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Taste Room Tuesday, um, Foodie Friday, Thursday, Tuesday Tip, Marketing Monday. Um, so there's a ton of them there. You'll have a page with all of those to potentially bring in as well. And then I have a tab with content ideas on there. So it's different types of content. Again, some might not work for B2B, uh, but work for B2C. Um, be the expert. 
you know, it can do industry articles, answer an FAQ, um, do how to money saving tips or time saving tips, you know, uh, solve a problem, um, do personal stuff and more B2C, you know, do the cute kids and pet videos, tell them like Lisa Leonard, you know, show the naughty dog on the table, um, bucket lists or challenges, books you're reading, you know, get personal about what you're doing as well. Timely topics, you know, I'll talk about the, the, the holidays in a minute. Um, and industry news via trending topics, you know, uplifting people love inspirational quotes, and they can be business or personal related as well. So a lot of different content ideas for you to think about. And I, I do have, I realize I keep forgetting to change the uh, slide here. Um, the new calendar has a tab with video ideas as well, kind of similar to the content ideas. And let's see, I saw some a question pop in. Uh, so Brenda asked, can I repurpose Facebook content? Oops, there we go. Uh, into a book form, or would that be cheesy? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, like taking content and writing a book with it. I'm not sure if you'd expand on that question, Brenda. You can put that in the chat if easier. Either way, I'm not sure what that means. Um, okay, so holidays. It's another content possibility. So in addition to the traditional, you know, Mother's Day, Christmas, New Year's, et cetera, that'll be on the calendars, you can um, add in these fun holidays. So there is a website called nationaldaycalendar.com that you can go to and find day holidays, week holidays, and month holidays. So for example, National Hot Dog Day or National Hot Dog Week or National Hot Dog Month. Um, so I'm 2021 and beyond, I'm saving you a step. Um, instead of you having to go to the nationaldaycalendar.com website to find the day holidays, I have now have a tab on my calendar that I copy and pasted all of the holidays for each month. So if you see at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a tab that says January and January holidays, et cetera. So January is a calendar, January holidays is now all the copy and paste the days of the week. So you can easily on the calendar as you're planning, go to that holidays tab for the coming month and look at the ones you want to insert onto your calendar and promote, okay? So there's a lot of wacky holidays on here. Some potentially could relate to what you're doing, um, specifically what your business does. Some might just be fun content to get that engagement. Um, I always use this as an example. April 2nd here is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, right? You guys might have nothing to do with peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> but a lot of us as kids ate a lot of peanut butter and jelly. I know, I know my generation we did, and there are not a lot of kids that we knew that had peanut allergies, but a lot of peanut butter and jelly. So you could say, hey, it's National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. What was your favorite peanut butter and jelly combination as a child? Or what, you know, crazy things you like to eat with your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? I like potato chips and pickles. <laughs> so um, that's just getting engagement. Again, does might not have to do with your business. Some might be directly rated. Here, there's New Beer's Eve. Um, I have a beer bar client and they National Bartender Day, National Craft Beer Day, National New Beer's Eve. So they're beer related. Um, I didn't see any wineries, raise your hand. I thought I saw a winery uh, enroll, but if we do have any wineries here, they're just shy. The reason I asked that question is when you get the page with the download of the, the recording slides and calendar, you're gonna see two versions. It's gonna say winery version and non-winery version. And the only difference between the two is on the winery version, um, because the nationaldaycalendar.com website did not have all the wine holidays, I had to manually go and find all of them and I plugged them into the calendar pages. So they're not on the holiday pages, they're on the actual calendar pages. So you'll see International Merlot Day on the calendar. If you are a winery and you don't sell Merlot, you just need to strip it off your calendar. And if you wanna promote wine holidays and you're not a winery, that's okay too pull down the winery version. That's the only difference between the two, okay? So have fun with these. You know, there are some, like my winery clients, there's plenty of wine holidays. I think we have International Chardonnay coming up, National Beverage Day, there's a ton of them coming up directly related. I could use National Deep Dish Pizza Day, you know, because you could pair wine and pizza. I think we have, uh, just looking at the post my assistant created for my winery clients, like National Cheeseburger Day or Hamburger Day is coming up, National Barbecue Day. 
All of those can be paired with wines. So we're gonna take advantage of that as potential content as well. So, um, and I'll show you how these work on the calendar. So have fun with them. Again, they may or may not be directly related to your business. Um, I have an actual for B2B, there might be some. I have a transportation logistics client and next month we're celebrating, woohoo, National Logistics Day, National Barco Day, <laughs> all in the same month. Um, I don't think there's any barbecues or parties around either one of those, but you know, we can, it's directly related to her business and we can do content around national. I, I actually wrote a, a blog article about barcodes for her. So we'll probably link to the barcode article for our National Barcode Day on there. So you never know. So this is the calendar and I actually skipped the page. I do have the B2C and B2B version here, but I'm gonna show you B2C to start um, and what the difference is between the two. So um, uh, um, B2C, so you can see here, it's color coded. It works the same, whether B2C or B2B. You have that red for holidays, whether it's traditional or non-traditional. Um, the orange is emails, baby blue are blog posts, green are events, and dark blue are social media posts. Okay, so I will um, explain how, start with social media. I'll explain each one, but I'll start with social media. So for each post for social media, you should have two lines of blue on the calendar, two rows of blue. Now, ignore the fact this sample, I might only have one line for some of these. I didn't fill out two lines of blue, but the first row of blue is gonna be what type of post you're doing. Is it gonna be a hashtag day? Is it gonna be ask a question or inspirational quote, or maybe it's a holiday, you know, National Donut Day or International Merlot or Veterans Day, you know? So what's, what type of post will it be? And then the second line, the second row of blue will be the more specific, what are you gonna post for that particular uh, social day? Right, so on the first week, you can see um, for Tuesday the second, Taste Room Tuesday, we're gonna talk about our Thanksgiving wine special. Wine Wednesday the third, we're gonna do a Merlot tasting video. A National Donut Day, I didn't put the second line of blue, but maybe the second line would be, we're gonna do a um, chocolate donut and Zinfandel pairing, right? Because of course you can pair wine and donuts, right? Um, Foodie Friday, we're gonna do a Chardonnay and Fettuccine Alfredo recipe. Um, and then there's also Merlot Day and Wine Tourism Day. Again, I didn't put the lines of blue. And as you can see here, I have six or seven lines for each or rows for each uh, calendar day. Because it's Excel, just add some more rows if you're going to do multiple posts in one day and you have email that day as well. So you can expand the calendar um, as well. Make, make it make it as fluid as possible. Um, but be as specific as you can, right? Because you, you, you might be sitting here planning out your calendar. Maybe somebody else is going to execute on it, create the graphics and the captions, the hashtags, et cetera. So you want to be specific. Make sure you put, you know, Merlot tasting video or Zen and pork recipe pull together or the ask a question. What is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? Or what will you pair for Thanksgiving dinner? Um, inspirational quote. I'm going to find a give thanks quote. So you want to be specific for your planning, but also for archive. So you can easily go back and go, oh, what did we post in November? Oh, it was a Merlot tasting video or the, we already did the Chardonnay and Fettuccine Alfredo pairing. You know, you could, instead of having to go back to your Instagram or Facebook page and scroll back, you can look back on your calendar that you've archived, right? So that's social media. I hope that's uh, explanatory enough. Any questions, let me know. Email, I'll talk about that briefly because hopefully you're all doing email marketing. Works a little bit differently. It works a little backwards. Um, you figure out what you're gonna email about and work backwards from there. So in this case for November, we have a couple of things. We have a, a, an event, the wine club party on the 20th. We have a Thanksgiving wine special we're running. And we have the Merlot uh, day weekend special, Merlot three pack special. And then we have the four, I call them promotional events, the Black Friday through Giving Tuesday. So working backward, started with the wine club party. You have an event and that's on the 20th. So the very last day we determine we're going to send out an, a reminder is the day before. Okay. Maybe it could be the morning of, but day before, a couple of days before working backward, you figure out, okay, generally you want to give, I give for events, maybe six to eight weeks ahead and start promoting them. So we'll send out an email 
working backwards once a week for six to eight weeks before that. The Thanksgiving wine special, same thing. We know Thanksgiving's on the 25th. We know checking out our transportation, the very last day to ship for ground to arrive before Thanksgiving is November 17th. So our very last email will be the 16th. And it'll be the, hey, last minute, hair on fire, better get it now before Thanksgiving email. And then once a week, about a month ahead. So the first one would have been like the last week of October. You want to keep promoting, sending out those emails to remind them. The Merlot weekend was only a short weekend special, you know, announcing it for Merlot Day and then extending it through Sunday with a final reminder, you know, hey, it's ending at midnight. Uh, maybe they missed the one on Saturday. And then we did a separate email for Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, different themes. So all planned out, all ready for you. If you can do, hey, we're going to do a Thanksgiving wine special uh, post on the second, but we're also going to be sending an email. Or for National Donut Day, maybe we're going to do a social media post and maybe an email around that. Merlot Day, we're definitely doing, hey, happy International Merlot Day on social media come get the Merlot three pack special and we're sending an email out. So now it's all coordinated, hopefully. And then you can um, easily coordinate your social media and email uh, campaigns. So B2B, for those of you that are B2B, this could be, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, which is definitely more B2B. If you're doing Facebook, tends to be more content that is more business related. Facebook, you can have a little bit more fun with um, on that, maybe for company culture stuff. But generally, you're going to do more business related stuff. So you can see here it works the same. Color coding works the same. You're going to do hol holidays. This is for, for my business, for example, of marketing. You know, I'm going to do marketing Monday, tip Tuesday. Um, the holidays that I do on here, not necessarily National Donut Day, but National Stress Awareness Day. I can give tips on that for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, National Philanthropy Day. You know, how do you give back? Um, obviously, the other holidays. Um, social media is going to be well, like those hashtags with information about, you know, social media and email marketing. I can do posts for Black Friday through, through Giving Tuesday. That'll be more about the marketing aspects of it. Because I'm, you know, don't promote myself for those holidays. So again, can work both ways for business to business or business to consumer um, on there, same calendar. And again, once you do the coordinating of your calendar, it's easier to say, okay, we're going to create a graphic for the for Instagram or Facebook, and then one for email as well. And it's all coordinated. So hopefully that helps to take away some of the overwhelm <laughs> for you. Again, still takes some work to create all the graphics and, and all of that, but um, this is that first step, okay? Any questions, let me know on that. And then um, advertising. So I know I get a lot of questions about advertising and should I do Facebook versus Google? Um, and it really comes down to what type of business you are and how customers generally find you and what their immediate need is, okay? So paid social, it's all about reaching uh, people with specific locations, interests, behaviors, demographics, searches about finding people based on targeted keywords they're searching for. It's all about intent, right? So we all know how to go to Google and put in a type, put in a, um, a keyword or keyword term, and we get our search engine results page, our SERP, right? You have your, your paid ads if somebody happened to buy that search term and then your organic results that come up. And we always want to rank the highest, right? We want great organic um, search engine results. We want be number one, but just depends on, on um, how you set up your SEO, you know, your, um, your content on your page, your metadata, you know, the name of the business, your meta description, your, your uh, meta titles and all of that, even your domain name. So a lot of work to do around SEO, I won't go too many details on that, but a little bit different, right? Facebook has, well, whatever, what is it now? Um, 2 billion active users, three and a half billion searches per day. Not all for what you're looking for, of course, right? Sorry, could you oh, say that again? Sorry, sorry. about that. <laughs> My watch decided to talk. Um, cost is going to be a lot different and that's based on the immediate intent, right? We go to Google because generally we're in need of something right away. 
So we might be researching something we might need down the line, but generally we're going to go to Google to find something we need right away. So it's going to be more expensive cost per click or cost per action in Facebook in general. You can see here consumer services, you know, consumer products or services. People generally are looking to buy um, a product or service right away. Almost more than double the cost per click and some finance insurance, um, you know, almost equal, um, you know, on here technology uh, goes higher on Google as well. So it really comes down to intent. Um, the audience targeting, you can get a little bit more information on Facebook because we share a lot more. You know, we are in different pages and groups based on different interests and things that we're into or conditions we might have. Uh, we're married or single or we have kids or whatever. You can do targeting with lookalike audiences based on your current customers. You can say people like them um, on there and might have the same demographics, geographics, behaviors, interests as well. Google, of course, based on keyword searches, you get some, obviously some location demographics, retargeting and things, but generally get more information on social media. Um, where the ads are placed, of course, are different on social media. Facebook and Instagram are part of the same network, um, messenger audience network, and then Google, of course, on Google search. YouTube is part of it or Google Play and then their display network of websites. And then so why would you choose one over the other, right? So Facebook ads, building brand awareness, growing your audience potentially, innovative and new products. So those things people don't know to search for. As I touch my mouse, um, whereas Google, again, immediate need uh, sales and leads products and services with high buying intent during search. So I'll give you a few examples of potentially businesses that could use both, but maybe one's more important. So let's just say, OK, we all know because we're in California. Sometimes I'm speaking for uh, out of state and they don't know where I'm talking about, but Bakersfield, right? We all know summertime, it's going to be like 100 plus degrees out there. My air conditioning breaks down, right? I immediately, I'm going to go to Google. I have immediate buying intent to somebody to come fix or replace my air conditioning unit. So it'd be smart for any HVAC people to be going on to Google and doing searches for, you know, fix my air conditioning, air conditioning repair or heating repair, you know, during the winter, at least the winter in California, uh, but air conditioning, definitely, right? Immediate need, I need it fixed now. I'm gonna go to Google. I'm not gonna go to Facebook and try to search for <laughs> HVAC repair, okay? But now the HVAC person probably mostly focus on Google, but if they wanted to try social media, it could be more for brand awareness. Maybe during the months of January, February, March, they run Facebook ads to say, hey, the heat's coming. Make sure your air conditioning unit is, you know, ready to go for that uh, hot season. Don't wait till the last minute. It'll cost you more, you know, so that they wanted, you know, most people kind of wait things break down until they fix it, but maybe, and then maybe it's like, hey, Joe's air conditioning repair, if it starts coming up on social media, it might trigger them to remember that, oh, you know, I think I've heard of this Joe's air conditioning repair, you know, but generally immediate intent, they're going to go there. Hopefully that makes sense. Facebook ads, different things you can do. Video ads. Sorry, this mouse is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, carousels, shopping ads. So if you sell products with multiple items in a, in a picture, you can tag each product to go directly to that, that product. Um, you can target, you know, certain people, um, again, interests and behaviors and, and demographics. So we all mostly share our birthdays on Facebook. Right. So if you had something like maybe a restaurant, your winery saying, hey, come in, um, you know, month of June is your birthday. Uh, come, you know, buy one, get one free dinner, get a free appetizer, free glass of wine. You don't really give away wine that much, but um, maybe it's a come in and get a free beauty product or a hair or nail salon. Maybe you're half off your services or uh, a free manicure or something, whatever you want to give away because you have that information. You know, target people for their birthdays, if it makes sense for your business. Target people who are newly engaged. Maybe you have a wedding-based service, photographer, hair and makeup, caterer, a location. Um, and you want people, you know, probably mostly women. I don't know. I haven't seen the demographics. I haven't done these ads yet. Um, mostly probably women who are, as soon as the ring is on the finger, go and change their status to newly engaged. So you can target 
these brides based on their location. If, if that, of course, that would matter for these services to be close by. You can target women or moms, women who have kids who are between the ages of zero to five and six to 10. I don't know what the exact tiers are, but you can do uh, target women or target moms, um, target men for men's services as well. Maybe birthday, men's birthdays, and women's birthdays, get more specific. Um, boosted versus um, Facebook ads. I get this question all the time. Should I boost their posts? So Facebook created these boosting, um, it's more recent than ads. I mean, it's been a quite a few years since they've had them, but I say they just kind of created this quick ad candy, you know, cause it does take some little effort to go into Facebook business manager and the ads manager and set up the ads and campaigns and stuff. It takes a little, little uh, education there. Where boosting just, it, all it's doing is boosting this one post for more engagement, right? So you can easily hit that boost post button, put in a few little demographics and some information, your credit card, and boom, you're suddenly getting more engagement on that post, which every post doesn't need that boost. You know, like for this one example, it's for a BOGO sale, buy one, get one case for a dollar sale. This was when you guys were all drinking heavily during quarantine. And this winery was like giving away cases of wine <laughs> pretty much when you buy one. Um, so this one, they might want to get more engagement on it, more people to see it. But I would probably do it as an ad rather than, well, the ads with alcohol a little bit different. But um, let's say if you're trying to sell something, I would probably do an ad because you can get more demographics. You can get more um, targeting, as you can see here from this little Venn diagram, uh, what you get from ads versus boost. Um, so you can go across, maybe have it post on Instagram as well another audience network where this is only boosting to people um, in Facebook to get more engagement. So um, I always tend to lean towards the Facebook ads uh, rather than the uh, boosted posts. But you can do them, you know, you can definitely do them. They're not that expensive either way to do them. And this gives you a little breakdown of what you, what you can do um, boosted versus Facebook ads. And of course, Facebook ads, still number one, out there. <laughs> so um, also, if you're doing ads, you want to definitely make sure you install your Facebook pixel to get that pixel data, um, con track conversion if people are doing anything, buying or going to your site or downloading something um, for retargeting. So if people are visiting a site and they go, you can have it retarget on Facebook, create those lookalike audiences. So people that are like your particular are already likers or fans. Um, so definitely optimize Facebook ads, uh, based on previous events, a lot of different things you can do pretty easy to set up your website developer should know how to go in and just install that pixel. Facebook has instructions on it, on their, on their websites. And then remarketing or retargeting. If you're not familiar with that term, you can definitely do that as part of your Facebook ads. So basically how it works is right. You visit a website. Maybe you look around and meet with a site maybe that has something to buy on it. Um, and then you go off and start uh, visiting other popular sites. And then your ad might be served on another site that sees your ad. So I'm going on, I use Erin Condren. I go to her website, <clears throat> I look around, and then I happen to pop over to CNN. And then now I'm seeing Erin Condren banners across the top, right? That's what retargeting is. It knew I went and visited her just before. And sometime during my browsing period, and it serves that content I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, look, I was just there. Maybe I need to go back and look for something. We've all seen that. We've seen where it actually can do retargeting ads again. Like I go to Erin Condren and now she's posting up an ad to me on social media as well. So you can set up those remarketing or retargeting ads as well. And then chat bots, it's some fairly new, might, might have seen these out there. Some businesses are using them. They pop up and say, can we help you with anything? You can interact with them. So definitely got used more in the past couple of years because we had no way to go visit a lot of businesses, right? We had to call them or go online and, and talk to them. So you can use them for customer service. People use them for shopping, you can buy from the, your messengers ads, brand awareness, you know, for UNICEF. Millennials, 
um, lead the chatbot usage. They probably more of a group that grew up with them and are using them now, um, but they use them on a daily basis as we see here. And they purchase from brands through a chatbot, 67%. I won't read all of these, but um, it says customers are more likely to shop with businesses they can chat with. That's interesting. Businesses believe chatbots will surpass mobile app usage. Okay, so a lot of um, businesses are really, financial services have really adopted the chatbots since the pandemic as well. You know, you can check your balance. I have some slides. You can check your balances and interact with your, you know, stuff that you don't want to you know, password protected stuff, I'd be a little worried about using a chat bot, but, um, you know, I want my double lock in, logins and authentic, uh, uh, authentication questions asked before any of my banking information pops up. But definitely, as you can see here, again, at least you can read these um, coming up, definitely have gained in popularity, different things you can use them, order food, you know, can shop, shop for food, um, check credit balances, you know, on your credit cards or your bank. Uh, messenger ads, you know, this market doing messenger ads, come and shop. Here's a coupon code to use as well. Um, so definitely check that out if it's something that makes sense for your business and you're using Facebook and your customers are there, right? Um, so looking under the hood, I mentioned that as part of my marketing circle at the top, uh, always looking at the analytics, seeing what's going on. Just like your accountant would look in the books and make sure that you're not losing money or spending money in the wrong places. You always want to look under the hood to make sure everything's working in order, right? So you your website should have Google Analytics installed, and hopefully you're looking at it. <laughs> and a lot of great information on Google Analytics of what's who's coming to your site, when, how they're coming to the site, who's referring traffic, and, and even converting if you have a shopping cart set up as well on there, or goals. You know, they can also set up goals like they went online and filled out a form and submitted it or something. And then also your social media analytics, all of them, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, um, all have Pinterest, all have analytics as well. So make sure somebody's looking at them, you know, and they know what they mean, you know, and don't still look at, oh, look, we've gained Facebook likers. Look at what else is happening, what content is being engaged with the most, you know, and if you can with conversions as well. You know, email marketing as well. Email has uh, analytics you should be looking at to see what emails are working, who's doing what, um, you know, are they converting at all? So all very important to get that set up and looking at it on a regular basis. Right. So a couple of digital tools. We have about 15 minutes. So um, hang in there. A couple of digital tools um, that I use on a daily basis for my social media and, and marketing as well that some of you may or may not be familiar with. So um, anybody here not familiar with Canva, raise your hand or just put in the chat, never heard of it, never touched it. Don't be shy, <laughs> no judging. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda, thanks for coming. Anybody here, am I, am I preaching to the choir with Canva? Uh, so Karen has a membership, all right. Or uh, anybody else, subscription, anybody else never touched it? or anybody never touch it, want to learn, if the Carol wants to learn. Okay, so we have one. So I'm assuming then the rest of you have uh, touched Canva in some way, right? And are familiar with it, but I'm just gonna talk about it because Carol wants to learn, <laughs> but important to use. You do not have to be a graphic designer to create your designs. I definitely know how to use Photoshop and Illustrator. I've been using them for many years, not decades, but I don't use them, I hardly use them anymore because this is so much easier. I can create a graphic in minutes and so can you, I promise. <laughs> um, once, you, once you check out Canva and everything it has to offer, um, takes away that, that graphic creating overwhelm and having to hire somebody to do it. Um, sorry for anybody who's a graphic designer. Some things you might wanna still hire them for, but you can do pretty much anything on Canva. All right, so offline and online marketing materials. So all of your social media types, stories, posts, uh, reels, pretty much everything on, on social media, you can do all the different platforms, all of the offline postcards and letters and resumes and presentations like these slides, 
um, book covers, calendars, lessons plan, just everything, anything. I don't think there's anything you can't do on here. Right? There's some more things you can do here. Um, out, different ads. There's tons of free templates. If you're familiar with it or not, a couple of you are saying you're not familiar with it. There's tons of templates in there. You can, you can see here on the left, this is actually a little video demo from Canva to show you, you can create video or animated, I should say, uh, elements in here. Tons of free elements you can grab. I'm showing here, it says running. Um, tons of templates to start with, and you can customize them. So you can pull in this template and add in some animated stars or change the colors, change the picture, right? So I actually have never really paid, played this whole thing to see that it's changing a lot of things. Well, let me turn it off and go to the next one. You can also create something called a brand kit on here. And this, um, you, if you, you can put in your logos, you can put in brand fonts. You know, there's tons of free fonts here, but if I have clients that use a specific brand font that's not loaded in here, so I load it up here. If you use certain brand colors, you can put the hex codes for those particular colors in there. So you always save them. So when you're creating your graphics and you always use a shirt, certain shade of blue and yellow, that shades in there for you without having to go and recreate it um, in there. So that, that's another feature on here. Let me go past this video slide here. Oh. And then there's also, um, again, more animated. Here's another one. So you can go and say you want an animated social media post. There's these free templates here, all different. You can pull on, type in Father's Day or Memorial Day or um, with summertime, and it will pull in a bunch of these. They're highly editable. Not all features are editable, Ed, not edible. <laughs> Don't need any of them. Editable. Um, so you want to make sure you, you, know, you pull in and see what is changing the colors. You can change the fonts and all of that. So all of this easily downloadable to use in, in all of your image formats, PDF, to print, print quality for all of those. I'm just going to go past that. And these are just some examples of things I've created. This was back from 2020, you know, Earth Day, social media posts. Um, emails, uh, I do proposals from here, my graphics I use for my classes, pretty much everything can be used here. And we're going backwards, there we go. Um, you, if the pay, with the paid version, they have instant resize, um, it's not on the free version. Um, so if you wanna change it and create a graphic and you wanna do it on Facebook, but you also wanna use it for email or Twitter or Instagram, you can change the sizes and just do some slight adjustments on there. So paid version, definitely worth it. Free version is good, but it's stripped down. Don't get a lot of the paid version. And for $10 a month, if you pay annually, so if you can break out that 120, it's $10 or pay it monthly, it's $13. That's 10 or $13 you'll spend for your marketing, your business is using this tool. Here's some example of graphics I've created for, uh, they can be used for social media or email. Um, out there. This is for some couple of winery clients. Again, some more winery clients, obviously small business Saturday, the, the background, you know, I didn't have a Christmas picture. So I just took the, found a Christmas background and inserted the transparent bottles over it to appear that it's their, their bottles on the table. So a lot of fun things you can do, marketing materials, a flyer, my speaker bios on here, rack cards, you can create pretty much anything. Um, I had my winery client, Red Souls, who I created a flyer. They won some gold medals and it was a PDF print quality. And he took it to a printer and had him blow it up into a giant banner that's hanging outside their tasting room gate. You know, very good quality out there. So pretty much everything. Emails, you can, all of these elements are created in, in Canva and brought into MailChimp. So the top banner, the fancy outdoor living inspiration font, since you can't pull that in from MailChimp, that's an actual graphic of that font. Um, these cool little Polaroid frames with their pictures inserted are created on, on uh, Canva and these two call to actions at the bottom. And then just it's all of those elements are brought into MailChimp. So used for everything. <laughs> so the next tool I'll show is how to publish on social media. So I'm not saying later, like see you later. That'll be in a few minutes. <laughs> um, this is a tool I use for publishing social media for my, myself and my clients um, out there. There are other tools out there. 
Hootsuite, Buffer, Monday, uh, Post Planner. Um, I've used a couple of them in the past and I've kind of landed on later. It's not, um, they recently, I should say, used to be like, yeah, you can use it for free. But like most um, initially free services, they tend to like decide, well, we're not making any money, so now we have to charge for it. So it used to be the free version, you could post 30 posts per month per platform but they've now stripped that down to only 10 per month per platform. Um, so it's like $15 a month for the cheapest one, which works. So you get back to the 30 or 40 posts per month per platform. Um, so definitely worth it. Another good, good tool to use. You can post to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and they just recently added LinkedIn and TikTok. So all of the popular platforms are on here. Um, you can have, um, on the free version, you only can have one each of, say, LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook if you happen to have multiple. On the, on the paid version, you can have more than one if you happen to have a couple of Facebook pages. Um, on groups, let's see, you can have uh, groups on here as well um, if you're, I think I think that's if you're using one, more than one account, um, more maybe more like an agency account on there. So it's a basic, the basic group product of this is the calendar. I'll show you how that works in a second on a slide, but that's the free version and that's what everybody gets. On the um, paid version, you can schedule, of course, schedule Instagram posts, not an auto schedule, auto publish them. So you don't have to go in and hit a publish button on there. Um, you can do on the paid version, first comment hashtags. So they'd have a separate little box. And just so you know, it does not matter for Instagram. They don't care um, if it's in the caption or on the first comment. That's more for your aesthetic. I always put them with the caption. I don't bother with the first comment because it doesn't really matter for Instagram. They also have a new feature. I don't use it because I'm using Canva. They have some stock photo library to use to create some um, user generated content. Uh, so I, again, I'm not as familiar with this particular part of it. It's brand new, um, but it's there on the paid version. Um, you can schedule Instagram stories now and schedule. They don't auto publish like the posts. So there you have that one extra step of you can put it on the schedule for 1 p.m. today and later we'll send you a, um, a notification on your phone and go, hey, go post, go hit post or go hit publish. We'll send you to go hit that publish and actually publish it. So you but you can pre schedule them now. I didn't didn't allow that before. Um, on the paid version, they give you hashtag suggestions. So I can just type in the word mojitos and hit suggest, and it will give me some related hashtags on it. I just did that for a client. I was looking for, uh, it's, a intern, it's a national craft spirits, craft distillery day coming up. And my winery client's also a distillery. So I just typed in distilled spirits or spirits, and it gave me some other hashtags like cocktail and hashtag spirits and stuff. So on the paid version, you can get some additional and it will just, you just check them off and it'll insert them onto your post as well. Um, you can also on the paid version, engage in conversations directly from here with all of your different Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. So you don't have to go separately to all the different platforms and do that. So it's another good feature of that. So the core product again is a calendar. You upload your beautifully created Canva graphics on here drag them onto the calendar. You've already um, uh, integrated or added your accounts in here. Um, so you connected your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. So you're dragging on, it'll pop up this box. It'll show you the graphic that you've dragged and dropped. You'll put in your caption and your hashtags. And if you want the first comment, you can also on Instagram tag the location if you wanna put the physical address on there as well. So um, same works the same for any of the platforms here. And you can, you know, reshuffle the time. If it didn't come in at the right time, you want to go, oh, let's send it at 10 instead of 10, 15. And that's the core product right there. So hopefully that makes sense. Both great products, later.com and canva.com. If you're not familiar with how to find them, great tools. Um, and then, so what's next, right? So what plan do you need in place to manage your brand? Um, hopefully the calendar helps with some of that overwhelm of, you know, take that time, spend the couple hours a week to pre-plan as far ahead as you can, batch, batch, do your social media, you know, create a week ahead 
um, go into Canva, create the graphics, get them uploaded in with later or whatever publishing tool you want to use out there. You know, what would that look like for your business if you had that plan in place? And what do you need to execute your plan? So I invite all of you, you all get a free 15 minute discovery call uh, with me to talk about social media or anything to do with your marketing. See if there's anything I can do to assist you with that. You can go to gall, sorry, callwithpatty.com or scan this QR code. Do a little um, update, updated way to contact me here. I'm going to look back. I don't see if there's any um, questions. I like that this is my very first social media. I hit the jackpot. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I hope at least that everybody take home one new thing or one new goal to um, execute on their social media. Um, I just want to look back and see what their what your challenge is. Anybody else have any questions? And I don't know if you can come off of mute or not, but if not, you can type it in. I'm more than happy to stick around for a few minutes here. And I just want to look and see what your challenges are. So we have one that's, I don't know who's still in the room, but uh, no social media or website yet, just starting, very important. Get that website up first um, and have that so people know where to find you. Um, getting more impressions, definitely. So hopefully some of this helped. It's, it's really... Social media is all about this, that time to build, staying out there and being consistent with the content. Very important um, to build that, build the following, build the engagement and that, get that reach up, right? Uh, and yes, uh, Yolanda, I'm just looking back. If Yolanda, you're still in the room, I'm just looking back at the questions or, or challenges. Um, I don't have a page and I heard I need to have a personal Facebook page in order to have a business page. Okay, two different things. If you're in the room, Yolanda, um, and for everybody else, there's two different things. Your profile, which is your personal profile, needs to, and I don't see she's in the room, but um, for recording purposes, your personal profile, which we all started out with, is what manages your Facebook page, right? You have to have a profile, a person actually manage a page, right? You can't just log into a page, you know, with user and password. You have to log into your personal profile. So I have Patty Ross, personal profile, and then I manage or admin my business pages. Now that your, your profile is not visible when you post, it won't say it's just posted by the business. It's not posted by Patty Ross. They, they could potentially link back and find you can shut down your profile and make it private. Uh, only people who are invited in get to see your content if you don't want it. But your your personal profile has to admin your business page. So I hope that makes sense. And they're not you're not posting stuff. You shouldn't have a profile as your quote unquote business page. You shouldn't be using that and, and adding in friends that are really potential customers. You want to have a business page so people can like you, interact with your uh, comment and they're not mixed in with your friends, your, like your real friends, family and friends and et cetera. So if you have like a lot of businesses started off with a profile and then using it for business, switch over to a business page on there. And you can't have more than one business page if you have multiple businesses. But again, your personal profile is what manages your business page. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I don't currently, Deidre, assist with building websites. I did have some website developers, but um, they've uh, flown north, <laughs> so to speak, and I haven't found a, a website developer that I trust at this point. So currently I do not. Most of what I focus on is helping people with marketing strategy, building a marketing success plan, or doing the work for you. What's called my done for you services, where I actually take over all your social media and email and blogging and whatever else you want to do. So if you want to find out about what I do, definitely schedule the session and you can schedule the session just to ask questions. There's no obligation to do anything, just a strict, a, a quick strategy call for you to ask any questions you didn't get to ask, ask here. Um, so definitely schedule that. I'm just looking back to see if I missed anything. If I did, and you still want to ask questions, you'll get an email with the slides and the calendar and all that. Feel free to just reply back and ask anything that I might have missed. I'm just looking. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So with that, I don't see any further questions. Um, I see Carol said, re revising business model after 20 years, retailing, reclaim building materials, need to clear out the warehouse <laughs> to establish uh, with demonstrations. Very cool. Yeah, YouTube definitely would be 
very popular for that. Um, people and, and Pinterest, uh, also the number one category for Pinterest is home design inspiration. So you're definitely also look at Pinterest as an opportunity for anything that's building stuff. There's a lot of like reclaimed, uh, what is it called? Upcycled, recycled, um, you know, definitely. So anything to do with homes is definitely a number one on Pinterest as well. Uh, thank you, Maura. I appreciate that. More delicious. I love it. So with that, I'll go ahead and close um, later. It'll be this evening because I actually have to leave and go to a live event, which is seems so odd these days. Uh, right after this class. So when I come back later this evening, I will um, make sure you get the recording, the slides and the content calendar. So watch for that. So thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and look at my calendar. Um, you'll get the link to my website, the education page. I do have more classes coming up. The marketing plan 101 um, email marketing is always on there. It's my core classes, LinkedIn, Instagram essential. So there's always a mix of classes every every month on there. So check that out and hope to see you all soon and have a great rest of your day.